and historically important exhibition called As, Not For, Dethroning Our Absolutes, features the work of African-American graphic designers from the 20th century, many of whom have not received recognition. Well, here to talk about the show is the director and curator of Jacob Lawrence Gallery, Emily Zimmerman. Hi, Emily. Hi, Nancy. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. We're delighted you're here. So let's set the stage here, OK? As Not For, Dethroning Our Absolutes, it's a traveling exhibit yes. uh, curated by Jerome Harris, yes. right? And he lives in Brooklyn currently? Yes. OK. Yeah. And it's being co-presented in Seattle. Two of the sections, musicality and parties plus protest, are at Jacob Lawrence Gallery. And Black Data is at Civilization's non-breaking space. Exactly. Okay, so there's yeah. where the show is. So let's start with when and where did this exhibit debut? It started in September of 2018 at the Maryland Institute College of Art, where mm -hmm. Jerome was teaching at the time. Mm -hmm. And then it traveled across the country to eight different cities, mm -hmm. and Seattle will be the ninth Number city. Nine. And it's here because you facilitated this. You're the one who heard about it and said, we got to get it here in Seattle. Is that right? I am lucky to be surrounded by some really brilliant students. Mm -hmm. So. Um, a design student, Franklin Van Diver, first brought it to my attention. Mm -hmm. And then a friend working at the Maryland Institute College of Art also reiterated it, how it, great it is. It is an important exhibit. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, so the curator, Jerome Harris, he's a bit of a, a Renaissance um, man. We were talking about he's a graphic designer, educator, writer, curator, also dance teacher, yes. DJ, cook, many things. And he writes that this show is, quote, an incomplete historical survey of work created by African-American graphic designers over the last century. So why does Jerome describe this exhibit as incomplete? In many ways, the work of capturing these black graphic designers has just begun. Mm -hmm. This is um, a first attempt at a survey. Mm -hmm. um, and it points to the work that needs to be done to create a narrative mm -hmm. and to capture this work more completely. And what was the impetus initially uh, for Jerome to put this show together? So Jerome, once over the phone, said to me that uh, he curated the show for himself because uh -huh. he wanted to see all of the work brought together mm -hmm. for his own research. Mm -hmm. And clearly something that started as a personal project resonated with many across the country mm -hmm. and um, has led to its celebration and success. Right. Nine cities, yeah. <laughs> counting. So the title, As Not For, Dethroning Our Absolutes, connect that with the exhibit. What does that mean? Yeah, um, the quote comes from uh, Alan Locke, who said that African Americans should speak as themselves, not for an idealized image mm -hmm. of identity. Mm -hmm. um, so speaking from an individuated perspective um, rather than as a whole. Like saying, speaking for an entire group of people. Exactly. Right, right, right. Now, the works in the show are both originals and reproductions, and much of the work is considered ephemera. So yeah. what is ephemera in this context of the show? Ephemera is, um, you know, materials made that aren't made to last forever. Mm -hmm. Party flyers, posters, a lot of really important work in popular culture gets worked out in ephemera. And many of the designers included in the exhibition worked in ephemera. People like Emery Douglas, who created the Black Panther newspaper. Um, so we tried to fold in some of those materials alongside the posters. Mm -hmm. Now, are there particular pieces, and I think there might be, yeah. that you gravitate towards in, yeah. in the exhibit? Yeah, um, I was really thrilled to learn about Sylvia Abernathy, mm -hmm. also known as Lainey, mm -hmm. who did album covers for Sun Ra and a number of others, and is credited as perhaps being the first female designer mm -hmm. Um, working on record covers. Mm -hmm. What is it about some of, of, of those covers that, that grab you? They're incredibly vibrant and bold. Um, they create a totally new visual vocabulary and resonate with the music in a way that um, feels unprecedented. Mm. Now, Jerome also writes um, about the exhibit, 
that it, quote, seeks to question, inspire, activate, and challenge the design community and beyond with the objective of promoting the deep history, design theories, and aesthetics of African Americans. So can you speak to some of the theories and aesthetics um, offered by African American designers, graphic designers? Yeah, I, um, you know, I think that there is a visual language that was established that makes use of bold colors, um, high contrast, is grounded in social realism. A lot of the Black Panther work, while being incredibly iconic, is also grounded in everyday life. And, you know, through this work, the visual identity for protest for um, Afrofuturism and for hip hop were, were made. Mm -hmm. Now, many of these uh, graphic designers in the exhibit, they've been excluded from classrooms, correct? Their work and their names have not been taught, which it hurts the artists and their legacies, but it also certainly hurts students who are studying to become graphic designers. So do you think, and maybe this is too early to, to answer, but do you think that this traveling exhibit is um, changing that, is opening eyes and kind of making it more inclusive, bringing these people into the curriculum? I hope so. Mm -hmm. One of the beautiful things about this exhibit is from its first instance, it's included students in its instantiation. Mm -hmm. So Jerome worked with students at the Maryland Institute College of Art, and uh, it's gone to a number of other universities mm -hmm. At the Jacob Lawrence Gallery, we're incredibly lucky to work with Razia Ahmed, who's a senior in graphic design, and Elizabeth Cavillo, who's a senior in photo media and international relations, on the exhibition design and realizing all the different elements. Mm, that's great. Now, as uh, we talked about earlier, you facilitated getting this exhibit to Seattle. Yay! Um, how important is it that Jacob Lawrence Gallery is a co-presenter of this show? I think it's, it's incredibly crucial for our mission. Uh, the Jacob Lawrence Gallery has a mission for education first, social justice, and experimentation. And as um, an exhibition that meets all of those mission points and plays a really crucial educational role, um, we're incredibly grateful to be hosting it alongside civilization mm -hmm. in Seattle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of right, the sweet spot, isn't it? This yeah. Show is for you. Well, thank you so much for actually finding the show or bringing it to Seattle. We're very grateful for that. Um, and as not for dethroning our absolutes, runs at Jacob Lawrence Gallery now through March 26th and at Civilization's non-breaking space now through April 23rd. More information, including details on special events happening throughout the run, is on their websites. Well, thank you, my dear. Thank you cheers. so much, Nancy. And I also want to cheers your beautiful address. Oh, thank <laughs> <laughs> you. <Huh? laughs>